did in 362 debates, Donnie. I want to get to 1,000 before I die. I'm 71. Come on, get me some more fast before I die. Okay. That's right. That's our goal. Get you to 1,000 and get you to 1,000 ASAP. We'll do one nearly every day if we've got enough of those willing to take the challenge. So here you go. Kent, one of your biggest fans, creationist crybaby. Kent, the moon is receding. So this goes back to the recession of the moon. Again, you use this argument. I know you use it in at least one of your recent debates. I'm pretty sure you used them in both and your interlocutors did not have an answer. So the recession of the moon, the fact that it's moving away from us, this limits the age of the earth. Sure, it doesn't give us exactly 6,000 years, but it limits the age of the earth in the sense it doesn't give the evolutionists their 4.5 billion years to take their goo to you. So Ken, can you speak to that? And you know what? I'll read his comments, see what he's saying. So he's saying the, mo the moon is receding at about 3.8 centimeters per year. Since the moon is a certain amount from the earth, isn't this consistent? with an earth to moon system billions of years old, Kent? No. Next question. <laughs> yeah, short and sweet, brother. <laughs> okay, it, it, again, it's obvious, it's observable science and it's obvious intuition. The moon is moving away about, like you said, 3.8 centimeters or four, uh, uh, three, what was the number? I'm sorry, uh, one and a half inches a year. It's been observed, it's measured. The moon is moving away from the Earth. Spaceplace.nasa.gov had an article about it, where the Earth is the moon's moving away. We know why. As the moon goes around the Earth, it creates a tidal bulge on this planet. That bulge, that tidal bulge, creates a drag as the Earth spins. That tide just keeps banging into the continents. It's creating a drag. It slows the Earth down. The energy is transferred to the moon, and the moon is moving further away. It's been observed. It's been measured. It's been proven the earth the moon is moving away about an inch and a half a year i don't know anybody who argues with that the question is how could that go on for billions of years and the answer is it couldn't see we're with this whole rabbit trail run right now donnie sorry for my throat i've been talking for four days straight <clears throat> this is only to rescue the first ingredient they need which is time all of this is to is they they desperately need billions of years and they know full well, if you take away time, their whole theory collapses. Now, I would so quickly point out, Your Honor, even with billions of years, their theory collapses. Because time makes things worse. Things fall apart. They age. They degrade. It's the second law of thermodynamics. Things are falling apart, not getting better. So time is not going to help. Okay, time is going to hurt. But the moon is leaving us about an inch and a half a year. This has been studied. Let's see, this is astronomy.com couple years ago, no, two years ago, bye-bye moon. Will the moon ever leave its orbit? Spaceanswers.com. Astronomy books are fond of quoting the fact the moon is gradually spiraling away from the Earth. Okay, I agree. Physics.org, why is the moon leaving us? Oh, there's a go. Ten years ago, did an article. We know why the moon is leaving from lots of different factors involved. The, the tidal uh, bulge on the Earth being creating a, a drag. <clears throat> The rate about four centimeters a year. Why is the moon getting further from the Earth? Moon is destined to disintegrate. Moon's orbit destined to okay. The moon astro, astro Cornell University is the moon moving away? Yep. Moon is the moon is not in a circular path. It's in a slight oval, but the oval is enlarging, 3.8 centimeters a year. Okay. Our moon has slowly been drifting away for 2.5 billion years. Well, really, how come they're saying it's 4.6 billion years old? And what started it drifting away? The moon's orbit is increasing 3.8 centimeters a year, Cornell University. See, there's a law called the inverse square law. The Earth and the moon are attracted to each other. If you would bring them into one third the distance, you take that fraction one third, inverse it, flip it over, and square it. It would be nine times the gravitational pull if it were one third the distance, not three times, nine times the gravitational pull. If you brought the moon into one fourth of the distance, you take one fourth, flip it over, it's 16 times the pull. Inverse square laws apply with things involving gravity, involving light. Good photographers have to study the inverse square law. How much light do you have and what the distance your camera should be away? It involves magnetism. How strong is the magnetic pull? You get two magnets close to each other and they snap together because the pull becomes increases with the inverse square law. It applies to girls. When I'm a certain distance from my wife, I'm 
retracted. When I'm one third the distance, it's nine times the pull. At one third again, it's no, never mind, it's overcoming. Okay, so the uh, Earth moon distance a thousand years ago was 125 feet closer. No big deal. Million years ago, 28 miles closer. 10 million years ago, 248. This is assuming a linear regress regression. Might be logarithmic. Makes it worse for them. Okay. A billion years ago, 28,000 miles closer. 1.4 billion years ago, I think all the ev experts agree, the evolution of the lunar semi major axis collapses a little over a billion years ago. They've known this for 20 years. If you bring the moon in closer, all of a sudden, like two magnets, it snaps together. We take the moon's current rate of recession projected back in time from space.com. The collision between the Earth and moon 1.5 billion years ago. However, the moon was formed four and a half billion years ago. Well, how, how do we explain that? Let's just change the rate. You don't know that you don't have, you don't know that the rate changed. All we can take is what we observe. We observe it's leaving an inch and a half a year. You do the math on it with what we observe. You got 1.4 billion years. So if you wish to imagine that it's low, older than that, again, the burden of proof's on you. How can you explain this lunar recession problem? This is just one of 30 ways to prove the Earth is not billions of years old. And again, like I said, this is only the first obstacle they've got. Then you <clears> got to get where did time, space, matter come from? How did energy, where did energy come from? Where did the laws come from? Uh, <clears throat> it goes on and on and on. That's right. I think you nailed it. They think time is the hero of the plot for the story of goo to you evolution. But the fact is lots of time is still not going to help them because things are breaking down. We've got the uh, law of increasing entropy at work. And so even with lots of time, you just get more degeneration, more extinction, but they need time. They need time to take their bacteria like organism to biologists. So Kent, that's an excellent response. And you know, in all of your debates and all of your years doing this, I've never seen a real good convincing response to the recession of the moon and the, sh the shrinking sun. To the recession of the moon, they just repeat the argument. And Hugh Ross even used this argument with you years ago in your famous debate with them. They just say, oh, well, it's not linear. And so maybe that can take them back to the 4.5 billion years. But you pointed out, if I understood you correctly, that's, that's not going to save the day for them. Well, that still begs the question, where did the moon and the earth come from? How did yeah. they get spinning around <laughs> in orbit? How did they get this nice gravitational balance? I mean, if the moon were closer, the tides would be higher. Way before the orbit collapses, the tides are going to be higher and going to wreak, wreak havoc on Earth. So plus, it, where did the Earth come from? Where did the moon come from? How did they get so neatly balanced around each other? The, the moon is essential for the tides to open down. That cleanses the beaches and keeps the ocean oxygenated. All kinds. Of, it, it's a wonderful. I'm glad we got it up there. Okay. It does a lot of wonderful things for the Earth. It almost like it was designed to help us down here on Earth. Almost. That's all I was gonna, it's, it's almost as if it was fine-tuned for life on Earth, brother. Yeah, right. 